everybody to Pro Golf Talk with you, Roy the Third, and George Honeycutt. And this week, we've got a lot of snakes crawling around the studio floor here as we're down at Innisbrook at Copperhead. Mm. So it's a PGA Tour, a regular stop annually for the the guys, and uh, it's always a, a fun tournament. It, it's a golf course that allows them to go out and just kind of go low. So uh, it depends on the wind and the weather, but uh, they've had some rain, and uh, some of the fairways are playing wet. But uh, if you look at some of the early scores coming from there, it seems like the golf course is holding its own to date. So uh, we'll we'll get more of an update on that a little bit later. But first, we're gonna we're gonna run down to San Pablo, Brazil, and the Web.com Tour is down in Brazil, and of course uh, they are at the Brazil Champions, presented by HSBC. HSBC, I'm gonna tell you, Hugh, they do a lot of sponsorship on these tours oh, the LPGA the PGA the web.com so you know hats off to them for their their support of the professional tours absolutely uh, in the game of golf but again they're in San Pablo golf course uh, today through Sunday the purse is eight hundred thousand dollars the winner's share is a hundred and forty four thousand dollars and actually this week they had a practice round where father of shoots 59. 59 was recorded during a practice round. You know what that's week. called? What's that? Shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. Well, it's, you know, if he could turn around and repeat it during the web.com tour event, you know, that's uh, big money for him. Oh, yeah. That's a it, lot of that's a lot of publicity. And if a frog had wings. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, the leader right now is Jeff Curl. He is through 15 holes at seven under par. Seven under par through 15. Tom Gillis, Tom Hodge, Ash Hall, Brad Schneider, Daniel Berger and, well, Casey Wittenberg was there, but now he's gone to five under. But we have five players at six under par. Casey Wittenberg at five. Sung Kang at five. Tim Petrovic. There's a name that hasn't been said in quite some time. Wow, he's he's at four under par. Yep, Aaron Price is at four under par. And going on down the list, Guy Burroughs. There's Guy, another name. Guy Burray. Guy Burray. That boy's kind of kind of nice. He's played good the last couple of rounds he's played. Well, he's, uh, again, getting getting right back up there toward the lead, top of the leaderboard at four under par, 67. Aaron Watkins is at four under. Mark Hubert at four under. And then you go on down to the minus threes. Again, a lot of players still out on the golf course. And uh, we are seeing some good scoring throughout the leaderboard. Uh, primarily, everybody is is within seven, eight shots of the lead. You do have some that have gone out. Jimmy Gunn, DJ Trahan is at plus eight. Uh, and then you've got the, the plus threes, Ben Cole, Stephen Alker, uh, Travis Bertoni, uh, Andy Pope. They are all at plus two. Alice Pressel. Alistair Pressel is at plus two, and then moving back up, there's still some players to get out onto the course, and they are, of course, uh, beheaded out around noontime Eastern Standard Time. So again, the web.com tour is down in Brazil. However, they will be coming stateside soon. So uh, the South American, quote-unquote, Latin American PGA Tour is in full swing, and had they have gone through their, quote-unquote, tour stops down there and before they start heading back up north uh, uh, to North America and, of course, into Canada. So uh, uh, I'm hoping the weather, uh, they're, they're seeing another, what is it, Vulcan storm system yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Well, well they, so, when they come back, they'll open up in Lafayette, Louisiana. So they'll have some, unless there's a lot of rain or hurricane come through there, it'll be some nice weather down there. That's right. That's right. So, again, the PGA Tour is down in Tampa. The LPGA, interestingly, is not playing this week. So we won't be mentioning the ladies today. But uh, they are taking the week off. And, of course, next week they'll be back up into North America and playing in the United States uh, through their Asian swing, which just completed. And so we're looking forward to them coming back home to the L- home of the LPGA Tour and playing next week. But however, this week, the PGA Tour is at the Valspar Championship, of course, down at Innisbrook, which is in Tampa, Florida, just outside of Tampa. And they are playing the Copperhead Course. And, of course, the Copperhead course is famously known. Uh, Hopefully you've had the opportunity maybe of visiting the Tampa area and you're heading out to play Copperhead. Uh, It's an easy golf course to get on. Uh, They have two courses there, actually. And uh, there are probably... The Island course and and Copperhead. Right. We played the NCAA at the Island course one year. Okay. And, you know, interestingly, too, they're, they're almost similar... 
But then again, they have their own uniqueness. So uh, Innisbrook, the Copperhead course, is famously known for the shrubbery that spells out Innisbrook at the bottom of the tee box and, and things of oh, that yeah. sort. So, you know, it, it, but it's been on the tour for quite some time. And so it's just a, it's just a normal favorite stop. Uh, a, a, a kind of a discussion point came up a week ago, Hugh. I was talking with a couple of other uh, amateur golfers from the Atlanta area. And we were discussing, you know, what about taking these stops that are in Florida, such as Doral now, that's, you know, made another name for itself last week, uh, taking Tampa, taking uh, the players, taking Bay Hill, mm -hmm. and doing kind of like uh, every, uh, every second year or third year, they, they swap their positions around Augusta. And to where kind of draw in a little bit more of importance into the tournaments, such as instead of going out to San Antonio next week, like they'll be doing, they'll be leaving Tampa, going to Bay Hill, and then they go to San Antonio. Yeah. But why not, you know, move San Antonio back up to this week and then have them come back to Tampa next week and then to Bay Hill and then to Augusta? Well, yeah. You know, I mean, you see like my point. To, well, it's like they used to, you know, they go to Greensboro before they would, you know, <coughs> come to Augusta. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they changed that around to where now, it, you know, it went, when they used to have the tournament there, it would go behind Hilton Head. I, it, the way they've but, done it. But I, then they also had TPC Sugarloaf when it hosted an yeah. event. And so the players would come to Atlanta yeah. and play, and then they would literally get in the cars and drive the two hours yes. to Augusta. Yeah. So it, it made sense logistically. However, you know, brand marketing, corporate sponsorship, things of the, the big dollars that come into play now on the PGA Tour. But however, how many of the players, like, for example, Jamie Donaldson, he's not playing this week at Tampa. He wanted to take some time off after his second place finish uh, last week at Doral. Yeah. So, you know, if, if that event, you know, if it had been Bay Hill this week, he would have played. Uh, he's staying in country, of course, from now till Augusta mm -hmm. to play Bay Hill, and then he'll he'll skip San Antonio, yep. and then he'll go play Augusta. I was just it was it was a discussion topic. It'd be interesting to see, you it's know have some of our listeners pipe in on this. Well, and the discussion of it is it's the tour trying to take tournaments that have suffered being like San Antonio was always late in the year. You know, when we play, it was always late in the year. So they didn't everybody, get the top name Everybody players. pretty much had burned out. They and had, everybody, you, either, you had your card and you were done, or it was the guys you know, <coughs> struggling trying to keep their cards and get right, there and go there. Right. So they've tried to do it to give it a little more of a headline, being in front of Augusta to try to get a better field, just like they kind of did with Houston a couple of years ago, that kind of thing. They're trying to get players to... to back these tournaments and play in them, and so that's why they've moved them to these dates. Florida, you don't have that real issue. So do you see, uh, for the players being sent to San Antonio now to play the week before Augusta, is, is that being tagged, this is your last opportunity? If you don't have an invitation, if you win there, you get an invitation? Is, is that the only selling card they have? Absolutely. I mean, that's what's going to draw the people to go there. If they're not in Augusta, that's their last chance to get there. Well, I, I, I guess that great. I mean, you know, they aren't getting any named players per se because the majority of the top 50 in the world are taking the week off and heading to Augusta to get ready and, you know, and play, play the course. Rounds, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that this is the only way they can get some exposure leading up to Augusta because their tournament will be on television, but yet there will be the commercials for Augusta with the music and all, so people will be watching and they'll be paying attention to the tournament. No, I agree. That's just trying to get them some PRs. I think it's a do. good argument. Maybe we take this subject up uh, next week on the roundtable. And uh, so as we're moving in toward Augusta, maybe we take this subject up. Maybe we do a debate. We'll invite a couple of our friends in, and we'll sit down behind the mics, and we'll, we'll start that debate. Okay. However, it is at Innisbrook this week. The PGA Tour is playing Copperhead. Michael Putnam right now is in the lead at three under par through six. Aaron Badley started on the back nine. He is two under after two. Luke Donald, two under after after two. Uh, J.B. Holmes, one under. Kevin Na, one under. Charles Howell, the third. I, I tell you what, Hugh, I can't say it enough. I, I, I just don't know what's happened to Charlie. You know, I, he's got one of the prettiest golf swings you ever laid your eyes on. I saw him play as a, as a junior, 12-year-old, as a 14-year-old. I saw him right before he went to Oklahoma to, to attend college. You know, I just I thought this guy was a world beater. Yeah, I mean, I played with him when he was 16 years old in the so in the Buick Challenge up at Callaway Gardens when I actually was on the tour. So I mean, I, we played together for two days, and the kid was amazing. He, he 
he he's always just shown such impress. I mean, I he was one of the first kids I knew at 12 years old that had a psychologist, a, a swing trainer, a physiotherapist, and his mother. Uh, you know, so yeah. that was his supporting group. So uh, again, you know, Charles Howell again. He's he has for the first several events of the 2014 2013 wraparound season. He's been up on the leaderboard. He has he he showed it up in Hawaii, and then all of a sudden it comes to Saturday and Sundays the third and fourth rounds and he falls off yep. Gary Woodland's at one under Ben Crane's at one under Robert Garrickus at one under Russell Knox is at one under and we go on down the list uh, David Hearn has started uh, even par through 13 Harris English even par through 10 uh, Boo Weekly is even par through 9 and we go on down the list. Uh, really, any high numbers? I'm looking here, Hugh, to see any. No, not ben too Martin's bad. at plus six through five. Uh, he started on the back. So uh, that's not uh, boding too well for Ben right now, is, is the event itself. Um, six over par. You got Martin, Leishman at plus four. Uh, Jason can. Kokrak, uh, another really good. I mean, he could pound the ball. A couple years ago, there wasn't, there wasn't a bigger hitter on the tour than Jason Kokrak. Uh, Martin Flores is at three over. Eric Compton, Stuart Sink, Brian Gay, Tim Clark, Jonas Blitz, Cameron Triangle. Uh, is at three, Chad Collins at three over, Jerry Kelly, Blake Adams, uh, Andres Romero, they're all at plus three. So several of the guys just not really getting off to a good start here for this event. Again, the players this week are going to be in Tampa. Then next week they go to, of course, the Arnold Palmer Invitational held at Bay Hill, which is, uh, of course, uh, the home of Tiger. And uh, if you if you think about it, uh, that it always is being referred to now as Tiger's event, uh, considering the the uh, two handfuls of fingers it takes to count the number of times he's won the event. Yes, exactly. And so you know it just uh, and then of course everybody then is going to be focusing and turning their attentions up to Augusta, Georgia, and the Augusta National Golf Club, which is of course the 2014 Masters, and we're trying to cover that quite extensively on coverage of the majors here on thegolfdirector.com. Uh, this morning early, uh, we went through some of the holes and things like this, and you and I will be going into the players, their approach to the course, their insight, and then uh, I actually will be doing live coverage of the event this year yes. on thegolfdirector.com, so be sure to listen up on that. Uh, again, Pro Golf Talk Live is brought to you by the Zeus Radio Network. Uh, George Honeycutt and Hugh Roy III, as always, it is our pleasure to bring you updates on Pro Golf Talk and what's going on in the world of golf throughout the world. And so we look forward to following up with you after this weekend. Of course, coming up on Monday Morning Golf Wrap, we will bring you complete insight and results of the Bells Par Challenge and, of course, the Brazil Championship going on in San Pablo. Thanks again for listening. Have a pleasant day. <laughs>